Hey folks, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with AR. I'd like to say hello to all of my friends in Texas. This is the first of our state level forecasts. We're gonna dive a little deeper into some of what I shared in the 2050 forecast for the Southern Great Plains. And I'm gonna experiment a little bit with a different format, which you may have noticed. We hope to try and look at some maps and stuff with you. And this is gonna be a little bit less scripted. Please let us know if you think this format works better or if we should go back to the old way. And I apologize if it's a little rough. The first thing we're gonna talk about is projected heat increases across the state. And then we'll talk about water issues, including sea level rise. So here we go. This is a map from the National Climate Assessment, what I've been using to make the forecasts. So interpreting this map is not totally straightforward. Let me talk you through it. There's two maps here. One of them is for a scenario where we lower emissions. One of them is for a scenario where we keep doing what we are doing. And these are for the end of the century. We're looking at 2070 to 2099 compared to our historical data, which is collected from 1976 to 2005. When I make the 2050 forecasts, I take a very conservative estimate from the lower scenario, which is what experts say is likely to reflect conditions approximately in 2050. And what I'm gonna say here is, is really important. So I want you to listen up. If we lower emissions, the challenges that we're preparing for today, when we look at the 2050 forecast, those could be the challenges that we face in 2100. This map here, doesn't have to come true. That higher scenario doesn't have to happen. The lower one is gonna happen. We're looking at a choice of futures here. The work that we do today could be work that lasts for several generations. When we prepare for 2050, we could be building a real future. We could be building a good future. But if we don't lower emissions, you can see that a whole different level of adaptation is gonna be needed for 2100. So let's check out some highlights on these maps. You can see some protected areas, and let's zoom in so you can look at them real good. Just a second here. Oh, and you know what? Excuse me, we're going to take a second to look at the key. This heat map here is showing a change in the number of days. So take the number of days that you have in your place in Texas over 100 degrees, and you're going to add this many days to it. So if you live up in the mountains here in Marfa and Alpine, by 2050, you're not going to have many more days over 100 degrees than you do now. There's also protected regions here in central Texas and up in the panhandle, there's some regions that aren't as extreme, uh, extreme for changes in heat. In the Gulf Coast, you can see there's also not going to be as extreme of changes in heat, but you do have other problems, which we're going to look at in a minute. And it's worth noting, we can't be completely like optimistic here. These areas that are looking at 50 to 60 more days over 100 degrees, a lot of those are quite populated areas. So we are talking about uh, power requirements. We're talking about cooling requirements. But the future here, it's not a wall of flames, the 2050 forecast for Texas. It's rough, but as long as we lower emissions, we're not looking at the really scary map. I think that's important. I want to look at you with some water problems right now. We're talking about areas that look okay on heat increases, which include the Gulf Coast and the Panhandle, I wanna show you some additional complications for those. So give me a second. We're looking here at the Oglala Aquifer. This is showing the changes from baseline. You can see that up here in the Texas Panhandle, a lot of places have been over tapping the aquifer. We have declines of more than 150 feet. These gray areas, if you're living in one of these gray areas or one of these blue areas, the aquifer is looking okay. But uh, you can see that much of the panhandle where you have these positive conditions is looking at serious challenges with pumping groundwater for the future, which is a lot of what they've been using. I wanna talk about a possible technological solution to this problem, which is actively going on in Texas. It's used really successfully by our friends up in El Paso. And that is desalination. If you look here, you can see that they've got a lot of desale plants going on in El Paso. It's a high energy way to get water. There is brackish water under the ground in much of Texas, salty water that can be drawn up for desalination. 
This is a high energy method for getting water. It's expensive, but it's been shown so far to be cheaper for moving water outside the region. I, I think you got to think about what pulling that water out of the ground is going to do long term. You're going to be dealing with settling of the ground, right? There's consequences. But I thought this map was potentially interesting and it might interest you. It might interest you to consider if you have local access to this type of water resource. And you might want to notice that right now up in the panhandle where the aquifers are running pretty low, there aren't any of these types of plants. Now, I want to look towards the Gulf and we're going to use another type of tool to look at sea level rise. So bear with me a minute while I change the screen. All right, so this is NOAA's sea level rise projector. This is a publicly available tool. You can go in here and check out your neighborhood better. We're going to take a three foot of sea level rise modeling tour of the area. Three feet, you'll remember it's not out of the picture for 2050. We're going to look at what this is going to do to the Texas Gulf Coast. I'm going to just fly along with you here and talk about what's going on. From the big picture view, let's move up from the mean higher high water mark. So this is, you know, you got a good tide going on. This is where the water is now. We move up three feet. You can see there's a lot of encroachment. It's pretty depressing. But we need to dig in to look at what's really going on, to look at if this rise is affecting populated areas and how it's gonna affect populated areas. Let's check it out. Let's pull off this band-aid. We're gonna look at Houston and Galveston. We're gonna look over by Collegeport and we're gonna look down by Corpus Christi. So I'm moving it back and I apologize. I'm gonna kind of blare witch you here as we look in at Houston and Galveston. We're zooming in. Galveston, we know, has a lot of crucial infrastructure and we know that it's low lying. If we look here and we model one, two, three feet of sea level rise, we can see that three feet will be impacting populated areas. And these green areas are places where, if there was any sort of a storm surge event, any sort of a unusual tide event, these green areas are going to see water too. So we see that Galveston is going to be pretty severely impacted by reasonable levels of sea level rise, not out of the woods type modeling. We move back, we're coming up into Houston, where I know a lot of our uh, folks watching, you live up in Houston, right? So let's get a chance to look at what's going to happen. I think that sometimes people think about sea level rise and they envision like a tsunami coming at them. And that's not what it's like. That's not a realistic picture. This is something that's gonna happen slow and it's gonna start by places that are wet sometimes getting wet more of the time. Look, you can see these rivers and streams are extending as we move forward and getting a little bit thicker. And that's what's gonna happen. If we look, a lot of Houston is going to be okay. We can see with three feet of sea level rise that the metro area is going to be impacted. You're probably going to want to withdraw if you happen to live by Buffalo Bayou. Let's zoom right in here by the downtown. Is the ocean going to come in and drown downtown Houston? No, it's not going to do that. But we look at these parks where we try to control water, right, by setting up green space. Right now, we can see where the water usually stops. We can see that with one foot of sea level rise, so in the next 10 years, maybe you're going to see that extended at its resting point, not during a storm. Two feet, it's going to go a little further out in the park. It's going to go a little further out in the park, but it's not everywhere. It's not like a wall of water coming at you. So Galveston, we've identified very high risk area, need to look at relocating infrastructure. Houston needs to look at building resiliency. Let's go back down to the current MHHW and zoom out. I'm sorry, I know this is a little bit nauseating. Talking again about the types of risks that we wanna look at. I'm gonna take us into this agricultural area here. Agriculture is important. Over here by Collegeport, we have the South Texas Nuclear Power Plant Lake. That sounds to me like something we don't want to go into the ocean, which is probably why it's so far inland. 
Let's take a look. With one foot of sea level rise, you see that the barrier islands here are starting to be compromised with two feet more of it. But you'll notice that a lot of the agricultural areas are still okay. With three feet, we're starting to get tidal encroachment more close to that uh, nuclear power plant lake than I feel comfortable with. And, you know, if we don't stop emissions, if we get nine feet by the end of the century, I am super uncomfortable with that level of encroachment. So as we think about sea level rise, it's important for us to think about cleaning some stuff up that's going to be vulnerable to sea level rise before it gets into the ocean, before it messes up stuff in the whole gulf. Because the gulf is beautiful and we've already messed it up pretty bad. Rant over. All right, back to the MHHW. Let's look down at Corpus Christi. Zooming out a little bit. Here we go. So this is an area that on the map had pretty decent uh, heat control, not huge increases in heat, very populated area. And let's look what happens. It's right on the beach. What's happening? Is it going under the waves? No. It's important when we look at these risks to try and get a realistic assessment, right? If you look at Corpus Christi, three feet of sea level rise, a fairly small portion of your housing stock is going to be impacted. The marina might need to be lifted a little bit. You have some pretty serious potential impacts to this industrial looking area here. But there's a lot of potential to continue to use a lot of the current city. You're not going to be necessarily looking at a radically transformed landscape. You can be looking at a more resilient landscape. Let, let's get over to this tool for a second and look at what we learned. We're going to walk this back. I'm going to try it back to some big picture things here. So let's go over what we learned. Sorry, guys. We've got some inhabited and infrastructure heavy areas like Galveston that we know are low lying and we know that we need to deal with. We need to move infrastructure as well as make infrastructure more resilient. We've got some areas that are less inhabited like around College Port, but they do have crucial infrastructure. Some of those areas are vulnerable to sea level rise and we need to devote some resources to clean up. And we've got some areas that are pretty inhabited. They're near the beach. They get the cool breeze and they're not as vulnerable to sea level rise. So we pulled off the sea level rise band-aid. Some of it was a little scary. Some places look like they might need some attention and some places look pretty okay. And this is over a multi-decade scope. So we have time. We have time to deal with this. I hope that you saw some stuff that freaked you out a little bit, but that you're coming away from this maybe not that freaked out. Maybe feeling like you've got a better handle on the scope of the problem that it's not like a wall of water, a wall of flames coming at you, that it's stuff that we can deal with it. Let's wrap it all up. We're looking at projected heat increases, uh, water availability concerns, and sea level rise for Texas. I'm sure that you notice that some places have a pretty rough outlook in the state and that other places have an outlook that looks manageable. It looks okay. Knowledge is power. And I hope that this video helps you and your community make decisions about what you wanna do how you want to build for and invest in the future. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe. Help get the word out there. There's hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.